All right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to Boxer Baddies. I'm here with Christian and we've got Stella here and his awesome GT86. So we are at Nerd Performance right now. Stella has something really cool in store. It's the first time we've actually ever done this to this car. So you'll I'll find out. Do. It kind of needs it. <laughs> it does really need it. So. Found out the hard way. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll show you what's going on. All right, let's head to the shop. Rage on that beat, going crazy. Now we got Stella on the lift, so let's go ahead and head into the shop and we'll go ahead and uh, explain what we're doing. Ethan's already here with the parts, so Ethan, go ahead and give us the breakdown. Hey, what's going on? So we have here ACT uh, X Extreme Performance Clutch. This is rated for 590 torque. And then we also have their street light flywheel. So this is gonna drop the, I believe it's 18.9 pounds from the original flywheel weight to a 15.5 pounds. So we're gonna have a lot less rotational mass, get those RPMs going up a lot faster. And then this clutch paired with it, with the pressure plate, it's gonna be, it's gonna be sweet. It's gonna be a ripper. All right, now let's get started. Start off by protecting your car's paint, because the last thing you'd wanna do is mess up your car while actually trying to make it nicer. It's also a good idea to have plastic bags with labels on them just so you can keep track of what bolts go where. Turn off your underglow and disconnect the battery. Then you can go ahead and unplug the transmission harness and all the other connectors that connect the chassis or engine to the transmission. After that, we can start by removing the two starter bolts located at the top of the bell housing. There will also be a nut for the main power and a ground with one blade connector that you want to make sure not to damage or bend in any way. Set it somewhere safe and remember to keep the bolts organized. With the starter out of the way, we can remove the two bolts that hold in the slave cylinder. And by setting it aside and not actually opening up the bleeder, we can save ourselves the trouble of having to bleed it later. Use a hex key to remove the witness plate on the side of the transmission and that will let you access the throttle bearing fork pin. Using a bolt and a washer, you can thread it into the side of the pin and then just tapping it out gently using like a pry bar and the mallet will go ahead and get the pin out. Last thing that we need to do on the top is unbolt the pitch mount located right at the middle top of the engine transmission and then we can go ahead and move downstairs and get started on the bottom of the car. So you're going to want to unbolt the downpipe from the midpipe and uh, you may have to remove your wastegate in order to access the two bolts on the back of your turbo for your downpipe. And if you're struggling to remove it uh, even after that, just remember there is a bracket that kind of hooks onto the downpipe. Uh, you're going to have to lift it up and just pull that off gently. Then place it somewhere where it won't accidentally get crushed by your car. Remove the heat shield and the four bolts that connect the differential to the drive shaft. And then there's going to be two bolts in the middle for the drive shaft mount. And then you can go ahead and yank that puppy out. To pull out the front axles, remove the axle nut and unbolt the lower control arm from the knuckle. Make sure you go ahead and replace this cotter pin when you're putting everything together. You're also going to want to unbolt the sway bar links from the lower control arms and this should give you enough space to lift and rotate the suspension free of the axle. And then once that's done, you can use a pry bar to separate the axle from the transmission. The last thing we have to do before we get the trans out is unbolt the shifter linkage. Now this is very important because the bolts won't go fully out until the transmission is partially lowered. So when you're putting in the transmission, make sure that you have the bolts positioned right because once the transmission's on, you're not gonna be able to slide them in. 
Guys, so now we're at the point where we're ready to drop this tr uh, transmission out. We already disconnected the axles, disconnected it. Uh, anything that we really need to, to do. All the electrical connections, got pull jacks front and rear. Anytime that we're moving uh, a lot of weight out of the car, just to keep it centered, uh, to make sure nothing, no accidents happen. And um, everything's unbolted. You just unbolted the trans mount, right? We got two more. Two more bolts, and then uh, we'll pull it off and get to the clutch and flywheel. Now once that's done, you could slowly back out and lower the transmission while using a pry bar to help separate it from the engine. If the trans is getting caught on the lower two studs, you could always use two nuts and remove the two studs entirely. Alright guys, so, oh you, you wiped it off. It's all good. Okay, alright, so we got the transmission down. This is Stella's 6 speed STI manual transmission and right there what is all of that? So all of this black residue is actually the fibrous material that is uh, your clutch plate is made out of. So pretty much when it slips, it's just burning off and shooting it over into the bell housing. So a lot of it looks like it got stuck onto your throw up bearing, but all of this is is just burnt out clutch fiber because <laughs> uh, it kind of old. That's crazy. That's what happens when you add another 200 torque onto a stock STI clutch. <laughs> there you go. Here we go! Oh, he is. Oh, Alright, now we need a thumbnail picture. Yes. Ready, driver, left passenger. Alright, ready? Hold on. <laughs> Alright guys, so now we are at the point where we're gonna take off the pressure plate for the very first time to reveal the clutch and see how bad it really is. Are you ready? From from the throw bearing when we saw it, it's probably pretty clapped. <laughs> Alright, you ready? Alright, yep. yeah, let's go ahead. Alright, let's see. So it's the other side that's really gonna tell us you can see on the inside. It it's goes. starting to get there. Oh well, it's not it's terrible. Honestly There's not a wear terrible. line like right here, which matches up with this inner one, but so it's definitely time to change. Yeah, you can see how it's like starting to be yeah. melt right here. There's more heat than anything. It was definitely too much for a stock one. Oh yeah, because now, because at the, you know when I was driving, it would completely slip on the um, on the flywheel. So when I was accelerating in uh, lower gears, when I put the clutch onto the flywheel, it basically when I would apply the torque, it would just free spin on the flywheel and would not grip it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So this will be really good. And that's where all of that stuff that we had on the throw up bearing would have been from. It really looks more like heat than excessive wear that was causing anything. Just too much heat for this friction plate. Mm -hmm. Which the new ACT clutch is supposed to be really good at. So, time to put it in. Let's get it. Alright guys, so this is the ACT flywheel we're about to toss on. So this is actually uh, what gets bolted onto the back of the engine and then uh, we have the clutch surface that's going to grab onto here. So if we're looking at the OEM one, you can see on the flywheel we have this heat ring going around it and there's a matching wear pattern on the clutch surface. You can see right around here. So I'm just predicting that it was just too much power for the uh, stock fibers to hold. It doesn't really look too worn down, um, but just too much power going through it since we are running 420 to the wheels. Uh, what was it, 450 torque? It was 442 torque, and I think we measured it out to be somewhere around 530 crank torque. Yeah, so that's just way too much for a stock clutch and flywheel, so ACT is going to help us out with that, and we're going to toss this in. Before installing the flywheel, make sure to spray the surface with brake clean and wipe it to ensure that the shipping oil used to prevent rust forming on the surface of the flywheel does not contaminate your clutch surface and then cause it to slip. When torquing the pressure plate, make sure to evenly torque it in multiple steps, as the clutch itself is somewhat like a spring and will tilt as pressure is applied. Alright guys, so there we have it. We got the new ACT clutch and flywheel on. Everything spec, or torque to spec. Uh, that's going to be 55 for the flywheel. And what was it? 11. 11.8. 11, 11, 11, 11, yeah, 11.8 foot pounds. Think, of torque. Yeah, which is 100. I have an inch pound one, so I set it to 142 inch pounds. Then do the math, divided by 12, all that good stuff. But there we go, and now we're gonna go ahead and get the trans, which is sitting right over there. I'm gonna pop that back in, and uh, hopefully everything's good. I'd say go rip it, but we gotta break it in no, first. Oh yeah, we get about a 250 mile break in after this. And then we'll rip it. Skip. <laughs> One eternity later. All right, so it's, 
It's, it's been 1 04 p.m. The uh, next day. The next day. We fell asleep at 6.20. We woke up at 9. It took us about seven hours or so because uh, we kept on getting the trans just not lined up right. And these things are very picky. Uh, so probably put it in, took it back out three, four times. And then Kenny, who's uh, one of the veterans here, who works on a shitload of cars and has been around the block more than a couple of times, uh, got it in in like 20 minutes. We got roasted. We got fucking roasted. But after that was in um, and everything lined up, the rest of it's gone pretty smoothly. So we just finished the last couple of things. Uh, just got to connect one connector on the bottom and then we could go ahead and turn it on. Yeah. All right, guys. So everything is now completely back together. Fluids are changed. Everything's good. We're going to go ahead and start up Stella and see how we do. I'm going to hand you the camera when we start her up. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm going to do it real quick. All right, guys. So now we have finished absolutely everything on Stella. It is time to see how she sounds. Remember, we have that downpipe open. So this is going to be really crazy. Yeah. Up the last couple of things. He's gonna drive it off here in a second, but we did take it around the block and she seems to be handling good. Uh, there was one concern at the beginning, which is when it was in neutral, it was still spinning, but after like two minutes of just having it on the rack, wheels kind of stopped, so no problem there. It's not like anything's engaging accidentally, like it shouldn't be. Um, Ethan, how hyped are you, bro? It was Dude, I'm so hyped. It is working right? very well. Um, definitely was pain in the butt. Right? So let's go over the biggest things we learned. It angles. Angles. Angles is huge. Um, it wasn't because the car was in gear. It wasn't because the splines weren't matching up. It wasn't any of that. It was the fact that we were just not coming at the trans or at the actual um, flywheel at the proper angle. Mm -hmm. So when you bring probably up, the input shaft kept on hitting the, the pilot bearing or something. That's just what was due happening. To the angle of that. That's what. Because we could get the splines to start to to meet up a little bit, and they actually would spin. Uh, along with when you would crank the engine, but the problem is is when we were trying to advance it would not go in any further So I think we were stuck on that pilot bearing. Yeah, so besides that though if you take out that Seven hours of struggling over <laughs> something really stupid um, We actually did a pretty good job and really fast. I mean look we started at 3 o'clock and it's 518 the next day <laughs> 20, 27 hours or so. Oh man, yeah so uh, I've been up since yesterday at 11. I'm going to bed. <laughs> so, yeah. That's like 30 hours up or something. Yeah, man. So, go ahead. Go home, dude. And let us get a little exhaust rip on your way out, bro. For sure, man. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Fox baddies. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you guys subscribe. Like, leave a comment if you got any questions on your Subaru builds. And if you need anything done, you could always just bring it over here. Nerf performance. And uh, we'll take care of you. So. Boxer baddies approved. Yeah. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Take it easy. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.